Now there is the issue of unitary fiscal federalism instead of the 1963 Republican Constitution on fiscal federalism. There is the expansive exclusive list and having an over powerful Abuja. The development process is a trickle down from Abuja to the rest instead of a bottom up economic um, and development arrangement. The census and revenue allocation that disadvantages the Southeast, that is the citizenship question. The Igbos think they become visitors everywhere all over the uh, country. When it is time for census, the Southeast complain that they are about the only ethnic group that have maybe a majority of their people living outside of their homeland. And that during census, their populations are counted in the states where they live. Imagine a state, I mean, and then population becomes basis for sharing the oil money in Abuja. When it is time for that, you count them in there, you don't ask for state of origin in the census. But then you use also the population to get the allocations. But when it is time to share anything else, you remind them that they don't belong here as the case may be. So there have been issues about citizenship uh, question and so on and so forth. So, in other words, this system, it's not just the Southeast or the Igbos that complain. It has not worked for Nigeria. And my thesis is that even if any government, including this one, just appoint, have all the political appointments from the one village, my thesis is that the life of the average person in that village will not change. Just rewind it. Rewind it again. And think the other way. The last regime, we had an Abel Azikiwe as president. We had secretary to government. We had minister of finance and uh, coordinating minister on the economy. We had all of this deputy senate president, this, that, and so on and so forth. Almost all, most of the financial institutions headed by people from the southeast. And yet, there is no motorable federal highway in Igbo land. This thing is an elite game, as far as I'm concerned. The issue of who and whatever and so on and so forth is not taking us anywhere. And unless we get to the heart of it. So, it seems that there is a consensus today. There is a consensus. If you take it much broadly, the North, I mean, so called North, if you calculate the number of years they were in power, but essentially poverty is still predominantly a Northern phenomenon. So, you know, that you control this and a few billionaires are met here and there and so on and so forth means absolute nothing. The ordinary man in Nigeria is, has not benefited, is getting worse off by the current system that we have. But there is a consensus now on restructuring. And in that case, uh, for the level that, the that Biafra becomes a lies and deceit. If not for the coming of IPOB of Radio Biafra, all of you would have lived and died in the ignorance that Ojuku caused a war. That's what they were writing. Britain helped them to write it. Ojuku was a rebel, a secessionist. Because we had no media. That is why they are paying Facebook billions upon billions of US dollars to stop this truth from coming out. Did Ojuku cause any war? Go on is alive, go and ask him. Did Ojuku cause any war? Ojuku went and negotiated restructuring with you in Aburi. You came back, Britain told you not to agree. Because Britain realized that all the component units of Britain knows that if you go back to regionalism, you have economic growth. The country will do very well. But Britain doesn't want it. That was why they even instigated the Nzoguku, so called Nzoguku, saying they would bring that world over to become the head of state. They knew what was going to happen. They wanted to truncate the economic miracle of Dr. Michael Hill. But what I'm telling you are fast. Go and investigate for yourself. In the East, you had the fastest growing economy in the whole world, over 40% every year. In the West, Abolo was performing his own miracle as well. Even in the North, 
Amadubela and Tafabele were doing very well. You had all those massive industries in the north. You even had Alamajiris that were employed in the north, meaningfully employed, gainfully employed. They were all doing very well. Britain said, no, for us to control these people, we need to impoverish them. Let us introduce this war. That was a coup by Nzogu. And after that, there was the massacre of, as usual, massacre of our people in the north. Ujuku said, I have to secure my land and my people. They said, no, let's go to Aburi to discuss it. Ujuku went to Aburi and agreed, restructuring. That's something now you're asking for, to tell you how foolish Nigerians are. They're very foolish. That same nonsense you're asking for now was discussed many years ago. Ujuku sat down in Aburi with Gowon and decided that regionalism was the best way forward, restructuring, going back to who you were, 1963 constitution, 1960-1963 constitution. Be on your own and pay tax to the central government, as they have in America, as they have even in Britain. Britain, you have Scotland that is almost independent, Wales, the same thing, everybody is free, but Britain doesn't want the same thing they're enjoying to happen in Nigeria. Why? Ask yourself that question. Anybody telling you about one Nigeria is your enemy? I'll prove it to you now. Ujuku negotiated devolution, regionalism. The North will be on their own, the West on their own, even Middle Belt on their sorry, Midwest on their own, and then the East on their own. It's the same one Nigeria. On, on their way to the airport before they boarded the aircraft, a call came from Lagos, from the British High Commissioner in Lagos to go on, telling go on not to agree. After having signed the agreement, that same go on you're looking at today, God kept me alive so that he can witness the destruction he will bring upon that very zoo called Nigeria. Go on said no. Do you know all the journalists in Nigeria, none of them have ever gone to, has ever gone to go on to ask him, why did he say no to Aburi? Aburi was restructuring. None of those agitating for restructuring right now has ever gone to go on or gone to Nigeria to say, but Ujuku negotiated restructuring. What happened? They came back and they said, no. Ujuku said, okay, so you want to continue to kill my people all over the place? No. Because of that, I'll declare Biafra. Today, they have brainwashed all of you with the perverse notion and thinking that somehow Ujuku is responsible for causing a war when opposite is the case. If not now, that after many years of hammering on this very topic, it has now sunk into the skull of the people that go on was the aggressor, not Ujuku. That's how Nigeria is, always blaming the victim. And we lost over 5 million people during that very genocidal war. They killed over 5 million Biafrans. They wanted to wipe us away from the face of this very earth. But we survived it. And we are here today. Those they gave birth to, they have come. And this time with a wrath that you cannot even begin to imagine. And Biafra must come. It must come. Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, great and wonderful people of Biafra, lovers of freedom all over the world. I greet you according to your time zone. I welcome you to this program. While you are joining, share this video, invite others to join. Of course, uh, I am late. My apologies for that. Uh, I got uh, hooked up with um, some commitment uh, my apologies to be friends all over the world if you are watching on youtube at judge money blog africa i apologize to you by for being late if you are watching on twitter you are welcome i never put up a time startup time okay yes i actually set it up in other platforms so my apologies to everyone for being here <coughs> late but we are here now. Thank you for joining. I see so many of you in the comment section of Mepeni, Gina, AB, Gina, and uh, among others, you are welcome to this program. I, I know I, I will not be able to go to platforms, look for your names in order to mention your name, but um, we will continue to monitor the, the, the comment section as well. So great and wonderful people of Biafra, lovers of freedom all over the world, welcome to this program. Of course, 
by the picture you saw from the beginning of the program you will understand and know exactly why we are here we are here to wrap up all the you know the big news that is coming out of nigeria the data we are here to wrap it up and then bring more and share more light to it first of all of course if you look at the picture in front of you the one on top is a top left is a man or that advertise for an empty apartment for rental in yoruba land and he actually addressed those that he is going to accommodate in such apartment and he said excluded Igbo people so it is very crucial that we address this matter as uh, as per you have seen our title and topic this evening we inherited some of this um there as an article but we will give you the breakdown analysis on that and secondly we are going to reflect on obasanjo's uh, um advice to the political candidates or the you know to nigeria very crucial as well and of course we are going to reflect on the clash between the houses and the fulanese clash between the houses and fulanese communities in the north we are going to also talk about the terrorist um, attacks when i say the clash between houses and fulanis it is not those fulanis in the bush it is like fulani communities and houses house community clashing with each other that is very very crucial topic that we are going to talk about now we're also going to talk about the INEC former INEC chairman who say electronic transmission of result not compulsory we are going to you know bring brainstorm around that and give him a befitting respond because everything they are doing they are trying to you know make sure that they confuse you in nigeria while they are carrying out their illegal activities because so many of you or so many of us they believe that we are you know not aware of what it means by democracy and when election is approaching there are rules to that particular election and the reason why for the introduction of such machine we are going to analyze that and the most crucial part that we are going to talk about it is the detain you know well i say partial detention of uh, p2b in the uk p2b was detained in the uk partially and he is crying about it so we are going to address that as well and uh, secondly the, the second most crucial path is tinubu 8 constructive threat on chima amanda Tinubu's aid constructive threat on Chima Amanda. Because you know one thing in Nigeria, I have just discovered that in Nigeria, whatever any other person does, if anybody that is a Biafra do it, they go into trouble. You can, if you are Yoruba, do what you want, say what you want do what you want if you are house do what you want say what you want if you are fulani kill who you want do what you want it is okay in nigeria but when an Igbo man make you know a statement on their own political view because we are in a democratic uh, dispensation i believe that everyone has right to their opinion so it becomes a problem to this nigeria just like you've seen a traditional ruler who made a statement 
that he will bring IPOB to come and defend them in Lagos. Because of course he knows that IPOB is defending them in Biafra land, which made it easy for them to be able to go home and come back. So they know the import he knows the importance of IPOB, that IPOB is doing what police could not do, what army could not do. So that is exactly the reason why he made such statement because he was angry. Their life and livelihood is being threatened every day. So he made a statement to see if he will have his enemy rethink of their move because nobody holds the monopoly to violence. That is the statement the traditional ruler made that led to the DSS swift arrest of such man. And nobody is talking about it. The worst part of it is that no politician is talking about it. Do we have politicians in Biafra land? I just want to ask this question. Do we have representatives in Biafra land or are you representing yourself from your kitchen? Because if you look at what is happening in Nigeria today, you will find out that the only people that does not have representative, they are the Biafran people. Does it mean that those you call your senators, those you call your governors, those you call, you know, those that actually supposed to represent you, they are not actually representing you. Anything can come from everywhere to happen to you. The gate of Biafra language, because Biafran people does not have leader, Biafran people does not have security, Biafran people does not have any guidance, Biafran people are dying. Biafran people are being intimidated. Biafran people are being victimized. If you have any leader in the parliament or in the house of assembly, I believe that the issue of the intimidation on Biafran people are supposed to be the order of the day in the house of representatives. But I am not seeing it. It's not happening. No discussion. No debate. We are being intimidated every day. So what are you going to do about those who are supposed to be representing you? Have you now seen the reason why I always say that when this rain that they are calling upon starts to fall, I believe that the first people that will get wet are your representatives. Because if they don't get wet before others, believe you me, they will sabotage the rain. I am telling you the truth. Because imagine what is going on. A traditional ruler. A traditional ruler. Dude, do you, you know do you understand the meaning of a traditional ruler in African culture? I don't know if you understand it. The meaning of a traditional ruler in African culture. You don't. Because they have bastardized the culture and heritage of Africa. That's why you might not be able to understand it. Have you now seen that those who represent you, who so-called supposed to be representing you or who supposed to be representing you, have you now seen that they're doing nothing? They are just feeding their, you know, greed. You know, the worst part of these people is that they are feeding their greed, but they cannot build a factory. A place is where can provide job opportunity for you. That's the worst part of it. These people, if you think about what they are doing, they are building generational wealth so that their children will continue to rule over you till thy kingdom come. You know why? That is the reason why they will steal your money, put it in the offshore, 
They will take your money, use it and buy house in Dubai. Buy house in all over the places where it is safe. Because the houses they are buying, it is not going to be beneficial to any citizen of that place where they are stealing the money from. It is only going to be beneficial for her, their children. When they must have gone, the bastard and the, 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 the spoiled brat that they will call children. That does not know what it means to suffer or to work hard. Everything that will be given to them in a gold, golden platter. Before the man dies, he writes a will. I will this one to my Diopala. I will this one to my Adam wine. And after that, everything is alright. You will continue to suffer. Their children will be comfortable from the from you know from tender age to the you know adolescent, from adolescent to adult, from adult to the old age, they will start rule over you. They will start to ruling over you again. If they are useless, they sell all those things. They will lavish their father's wealth. But have you seen in a situation whereby had it been these people are stealing this money, using it and establishing companies, factories, Using such money, you know, to establish, you know, do you know that private sector can build a seaport? A private sector can build a seaport if the government does not have money to do such. Because a private sector can build an airport if the government does not have money to do such. And rent it to the government. Do you know that? But these people will never use this money that they are stealing from you to establish something that will be beneficial to you, even though it is going to be in the name of them and their children. For you to see how mean and wicked these people are, for you to see that these people are actually your primary enemy. Because if they steal that money, build their factory so that anybody that is graduating from university, they will have a, a job opportunity, even if it is coming from the private sector. So that that factory they build, they are so, you know, they believe they are intelligent. That is why they say that once on a law course, you know, on man. if you build that factory, that is a generational wealth. If you build that, if you bring innovation that will enable people to get employed, and you have CEOs. This is a generational wealth. But in their own mind, I have a house in Dubai. I have a house in the Hong Kong. I have a house in the United States. I have a $100 million in my offshore. And then you give it to your children. What is he going to bring back to you? Or to your so-called beloved country? What is he going to do for you? Absolutely nothing. You know, I pity those who decide to create cash and live for their children. Instead of creating something that will be a business, establishing a business, that they will will it to their children. While their children is of age, they go to school. After going to school, they do their industrial training or they do their, um, yeah, their industrial training in that business, even if it is not um, actually what they studied because you are not getting them to study in order to get employment or to be employed. You must bring them to, to think like an entrepreneur. The reason why you are bringing them to think like an entrepreneur so that they will be versatile with any situation in business. No matter what they studied, it's not a must they will study the type of business you are doing. 
but because they will have experience of the business you are doing it is it has become their you know their tradition that this is a business that exists in this family this is how portuguese are making generational wealth you see portuguese that's how they are building generational wealth but uh, you, you know, be our friends. You go and steal money that belongs to a community. You go and keep it in abroad. Tax the tax you will pay it in abroad. You will pay tax there. It will not benefit you. It will not benefit those around you. The only thing it's going to benefit is celeb women celebrities. It is women celebrities that is going to benefit from it. After women celebrities, tomorrow your son will grow up, become a useless son. He will destroy all those things without knowing the value because he never worked for them. They will be under pressure. They will be under pressure. There is no opportunity for anybody. That's why there is a lot of, you know, a lot of things going on in Biafra land. Because they don't remember their own people. Those who are supposed to. There is a video of a family that I was looking at today. A video where a mother was accused of killing her, her daughter. A mother was being accused of killing her daughter. From, uh, I think they say they are from Oga. And they even forced her to carry the child. And she ended up carrying the child, picking up the child. I know that so many of you must have come across that video. This is the video. That is the video right in front of you. Let me see if I will bring it to be... I believe that so many of you are aware of this video. They started digging. Oh, they agama aga life now. Kangu nuko si batakoro. Eh? I'm one girl, Robo. Yes. Okay. I'm going to fast forward so that we will. I don't want to waste time. <laughs> Now, I don't have time to play this video because I have a lot of things to do, to, to talk about. In this video, it is a video where there is a family, the mother and the son, they were fighting with each other. Because you know why they are fighting? They are fighting for the sake of religion. For the sake of religion, that is the reason why they are fighting with each other. The son become a cherubim. While the mother is an Anglican, now they begin to fight. The son will go and uh, he say he go and ask question. They say the mother is a problem. From there, the sister was sick, and they, from church to hospital, from hospital to home, they were not able to go to do a lab test to find out what was wrong with the sister. They left the sister, and the sister eventually died. And it becomes a problem to them. Do you know why they were not able to do anything in order to save the sister or in order to find out exactly what is wrong with the sister? You know why? Because, because there is no infrastructure. There is no infrastructure for that. No infrastructure for that. That is the reason why they could not go. Because in every country, they have infrastructure for a, a hospital. At least, even if you don't have money, government, you know, subsidize such hospital. Now, not only that, 
Those, this family, the son now, Ebijina, thank you very much. Divided faith is the, the problem they have in that, in that her family. The son now started accusing the mother that they killed their, the, the, the sister. So if you look at the if you look at the story, it doesn't make sense. And you find elderly people sitting there re listening to rubbish. The last one I listened to was that they sent the woman back to his um, Amobia. And they called the Amobia people to leave. <laughs> you know, this story was so, you know, it was so like childish story. Because they said the woman killed her child. Do you know why? Because they say that the woman buried Ebuna in the family. Sabbath, you know, use Ebuna to pray. Sabbath, use Ebuna to pray. So there, I don't think there is a, a lot of things that is different from Sabbath and uh, Cherubim. Now, the son is a Cherubim. The mother is Anglican. Now at the end of the day, the son is now saying that the mother buried, buried um, Ebuna, buried this one, buried that one. When it is something that is similar to the type of prayers the white garment church does. And Cherubim is a white garment church. Now, I am asking myself, are you sure that the son is not under, under a spell or under something? I am telling you honest truth because I saw the shenanigan that is, was going on there. He was talking. He didn't. He was not even feeling as somebody that lost her sister. He was just after nailing the mother. <laughs> Have you seen the type of broken society that this your politicians, you know, have nurtured? in the last six decades because it will always you know go back to the politicians their lack of prov the, you know provision of infrastructure provision of job opportunity regulation of you know religion and their and their faith faith base or uh, all this thing regulating them now this family is divided for the sake of religion they are fighting each other now coming to the child that died if you look in look me looking at the child that died you will see that this child has a critical medical condition because I saw her. She has a critical medical condition. And the three medical conditions I am going to give you could be the potential killer of this child. Because number one is that Nigeria, so the first thing they're supposed to do is to conduct an autopsy. But they didn't do that. They kept on blindly accusing the mother of killing the child. Because that is a zoo country called Nigeria. The things that could kill that child. Number one potential killer of that child could be HIV. HIV. AIDS. Number one. Number two could be kidney failure. Unidentified kidney failure. Number three could be cancer, unidentified. Likewise, the HIV, unidentified. These were the three things that could be the problem of that child that died. Because I even heard about um, she did an abortion. It was turned septic. You know, there are so many stories are behind it, yet they say it is the mother. Instead of blaming the government, who did not make adequate provision for the poor people to be able to assess medical care? 
He is blaming it on, her, on his mother. I don't even trust that child. <laughs> the hospital they went said they did not find anything. Lies. You know, a typical lies. You see how this faith-based organization confuse people. You see how religion confuse people. What, how, which hospital did they go that they couldn't find anything? What is the, what scan did they do? What lab test did they do that the hospital could not dictate anything? Because it is an empty hospital. Quack nurse and quack doctors. There is no way a hospital will not dictate anything. Even if it is something done traditionally, it will have to affect something in order to, you know, trouble you. You know, these are the things, you know, the mind of a conquered people. They think very awkward. Very, very awkward. And that is the reason why the politician will continue to Politicians will continue to actually treat you like nothing. Manipulate you. How can they say they went to hospital and they found nothing? I want if there is any professional medical doctor that is right in under the influence of my voice. I want you to tell me, is there such thing that somebody is, have, is being sick? And they went to hospital. Hospital found nothing. It does not exist. Even if there is something done, according to them, spiritual something. Spiritual something will lead you to break your leg. And they have internal bleeding. From internal bleeding to abscess, from this to that. So there is always something. Medically. So forget those movies that you watch, you Nollywood movies that you watch, that tells you that they have taken him, they have taken their father everywhere, and they dictated nothing. But the man is dying. You are telling me medically they dictated nothing. It does not exist. That is the mindset of fools. Awkward fools. I don't mean to insult anybody. I don't want to insult anybody, but that is the reality of it. You see now how religion is causing too much damage in the minds of our people. When we talk about it, you get, you get so mad, you get so crazy, you get so agitated. But this religion was not created by your dad or your mom or anybody that you know. You just woke up and saw that it was Roman Catholic. Tax, tax go to Romans. Italy. You woke up and say, Angelicans. The tax go to, you know, Britain. Angelicans. Or Anglican. The tax go to Britain. You woke up and say, Orthodox. Um, the Orthodox, I believe, is, from, is, is Belgium. The tax go there. So, all these things that you, were, you woke up seeing, is there any of them that was created by anybody you know? Do you know that it is all these churches that gave birth to these traditional um, native doctors? These criminal native doctors... Some of them will come online and be acting as if they can bring heaven to closer to earth. When they have nothing to, you know, they just bragging. The same are applicable to, you know, pastors. Causing division all over the place. Causing division. You go to traditional doctor. The traditional healer tell you it is your mother. You go to Chorobim. Chorobim tell you uh, your mother Silike. Oh, Different stories from one another causing conflict. Conflict in the same home between parents and children. Has he not done enough damage for that? 
you will begin to know that this person or this thing you are promoting it was not found by your ancestor or any anybody from you it was not you are forcing it bringing division because of it your loved ones are fighting each other because of what they knew nothing about why why i ask now let me read some comments let me find out exactly not okay thank you very much that's what they mentioned that they should leave everyone was saving their okay they said that many people actually donated money they didn't want to work on the child a test was conducted but nothing was found what type of test what type of test was conducted because if you want to con and, you know conduct a test for malaria it is a different blood sample if you want to conduct a test for typhoid it is a you will have to get another blood sample if you want to contest a test for hiv you have to bring its own blood again it is different machines different devices for testing of all these things if you want to scan for pneumonia pneumonia you go to scan it is a different mechanism if you want to scan for cancer that is or you, you will go to something like um um there is the one they called um uh is it um radio iodine radio iodine something if you want to test for thyroid you go for a different a different uh, mechanism all these things they have their different mechanism some people they will even have thyroidism hyper or lower thy thyroidism you will find out they are dying slowly there are you know which the treatment differs the treatment you know it will it, it will even get to the extent that you have to radioactive you know put those people to be radioactive by doing radio iodine to improve their thyroid so there are many things that could lead to the death of this child they are telling you they went to lab test what type of lab test lab test in you know lab test in nigeria and p peace we use your urine urine is the lab test most of the lab tests they're doing in nigeria if you take a blood sample to to the lab um to the this thing it is it will be like a biggest something am i lying <laughs> what type of lab test that they did if you conduct this as a medical professional if it doesn't work you check in your book if you are if you don't have retentive memory you check in your book where you will find out a person is having such symptoms what causes this symptom then you continue to do lab tests continue to research on this person take blood sample every time until you find out what is wrong with the person but there is no adequate facility for that in nigeria so doctors and people who does not have money plus doctors with no qualifications practicing in nigeria that is exactly something that you will do, you see that happened to that child um um Abby, Gina, i don't think it is it is dehydration believe you me the child cannot die of dehydration because the child is 23 years old right so it cannot be dehydration the child will be eating if he want to eat if she ha if she if the child have appetite to eat he will sh she will eat if she want you know liquid she will you know she will request for liquid there was, there is no story like the child was not given anything that the child wanted and if the child is dehydrated there is no way hospital will be there if you go to hospital first thing they do to you they put you drip they give you drip so the drip will de will rehydrate the child so have you now seen the dehydration or starvation is nullified drip is rehydration and when you are on drip even if you don't eat much you will still survive 
So, the most important thing, this is the error of medical error. And at the end of it, you will find out that these people, the, 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 this child died because of the ignorance of the medical professionals. They are the killer of this child. And at the end of the day, the family is fighting themselves. Saying they buried something in the front. They buried something in the ground. They buried something. In... While you saw these things were buried against your sister, you didn't take it out. Until your sister died, you come and bury Running your mouth like charlatan. That boy, that boy, he, that boy is a very, very stupid boy. Very, very stupid. I can assure you. Having seen all these things that I have just witnessed in this, uh, in all these things, they exactly they neglected the child. They neglected the child. Not only the neglection of the child, the medical practitioner who saw to the child is supposed to be, you know, the license of that medical practitioner is supposed to be confiscated by the authorities. Because you cannot tell me you conducted a one lab test. One lab test, the urine. You conducted the urine. Maybe after con you conducted the urine, you didn't find a, a protein in the urine. You will tell us, no, uh, the uh, there is nothing we found. Or you went and took a blood sample, you conducted malaria and typhoid. When the child is not having malaria and typhoid, and the child was uh, positive, uh, negative with malaria and typhoid, all you now come to tell the parents, uh, we, conduct we conducted um, a lab test, we saw nothing. That is incompetent. That is very, very incompetent. Someone is telling me to make investigation. Investigation on what? As long as they were opening their mouth to tell me that they have run lab, lab tests and they, 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 they covered nothing. You know, I don't want you to tell me to make investigation according to my experience with medical, you know, with, the, with medical or experience in, in, in all this... Um, in fact, my general experience, let me not actually be specific. My general experience, the child was neglected and the doctor that saw to the child is an incompetent doctor. I can categorically tell you that. Any medical professional will tell you the same thing I'm telling you. Because there is no way somebody is sick. You can't figure out what's wrong with that person. There is no way. It doesn't exist. Let's assume that we believe in the in this juju. Nakameya. Juju will come in, damage your kidney. Juju will come in, damage your heart. Juju will there must be something that will be affected by the juju. And that thing is the symptom. That you need to discover and start treating it. Why are we lying to ourselves here? Do you know that there is no HIV campaign in Nigeria? Young children, they are scared even to say it that they have it. That is exactly what you will see going on there. Your child might be dying of a severe illness. That she will be dying in silence because of what the family will say. Or what the community will think of her. Of her. And the doctor will give them a hand. Because they don't. The first thing a doctor will do. As a, a medical practitioner, having seen the rate of HIV AIDS across the world, if a child is, if anybody is sick, in Nigeria, you're supposed to start with malaria, typhoid, from the HIV, from HIV, you conduct, you know, um, diabetes, sugar, BP, because there is too much stress in Nigeria, you will conduct these are basic things you must do in Nigeria. If you can't do such those basic things, you are, you are not qualified to be a medical practitioner in Niger in any country of the world. These are like first aid. And believe me, if you think about all the things these things that I just mentioned. 
Believe you me, you will find out that the child is suffering from one of them. And the family neglected it because some people are going to native doctor. Some people are going to Ndichorobin. Some people are going to Quack, Quack Hospital. Some people are going there. You know, everywhere is divided. Who is going to listen to who? Now resulting back to religion. Now extended to the, your political leaders. Extended to your political leaders. To the extent they are telling a Kulobia people to leave. You know, elderly person. <laughs> Dude. People are, are unashamed of themselves. But I'm going to leave it here because this is not exactly what I am here to talk about. But I thought I might reflect on that because it is something that is very, very important. We continue to educate our people on that. The reason why there is a media house. Media house supposed to be pushing a campaign for HIV. Pushing for campaign for breast cancer. Pushing a campaign for typhoid pushing a campaign for malaria because these are dangerous you know illness it can kill they're supposed to teach the young children how to protect themselves they can even say they will they will put up a disclaimer viewers description discretion is advised it is up to parents to learn it because parents will learn and teach their children because some parents are quite uninformed, very, very uninformed on what to do. Because when their children fall sick, they say we are going to pray. The reason why they are taking their children to hospital to, to church to pray is because there is no good hospital that they can access for free. They don't have money. They will say they will take the child to the church. That is it. You see, your political leaders, your representatives are your worst enemy. That is the reason why you are living the life in infamy. In that zoo country called Nigeria, believe you me, I'm so mad. I don't even want to be, you know, constructive in this argument. I don't, I don't feel like being constructive in the argument because it is actually, it is triggering. It, this story that i am hearing is actually you know it, it, it doesn't sound good believe me it doesn't sound good let me bring more people into this program it doesn't sound good what i am listening what i have seen i watched this video i watch it so many times i actually watched the second part i watched the one of the man talking i what without i also now later what another one from the story, you know, within where people exonerated the mother. You might even find out the boy is not even innocent. <laughs> if, if there is anything, they say, if eventually it occurs or if eventually it happens that, that there is something that exists called traditional something somebody will do to you that medical practitioner will not discover it you might even see that the boy knows about it but that such thing doesn't exist that is my you know that is the problem such things doesn't exist this is superstition and the medical practitioners are not supposed to be superstitious but they are in Nigeria. They are in Nigeria. Why? These are people who use illnesses to challenge their profession. They use different challenges to challenge their profession. But they couldn't save that girl. The letter died. They couldn't save. Or maybe even if they couldn't suggest. Because the fact that they said that they checked everything. And they couldn't find anything. It means that they couldn't suggest anything professional. They were just being superstitious. They were just being superstitious. That's why they couldn't save her. Now, 
let me just leave it there but believe you me your your medical practi uh, practitioners are zero and the number two the reason why they are zero it is because your representatives your political representatives they are all thieves they are not making provision to make sure that people are placed according to their profession and are adequately you know get, you know resourced like they're supposed to you know have hospital that is when the infrastructure must come in the infrastructure the professionals the equipment so all these things must come together so i am going to leave it here tell the family they should go in and sort their differences tell the child he should go and apologize to the mother regardless of what she think the mother is a religious bigot as much as the son because the mother might be might go there they tell her do this you will come and do the other one will go they tell her do this you will come and do maybe if, if they say that there was a you know um, um that someone was beating the child that there is a beating marks all over the child you will find out that he might she it might be that the mother went to mountain of fire they told her to take a stick and papia mojo nalo. So there are many things that could result to anything. All you need to do is bring down yourself, bring down your ego a little bit, and make sure, make inquiries. Not because somebody tell you your mother is is a very strong woman, then it becomes that your mother is the one who killed your sister. It doesn't make sense. These are the you know another way. You will understand people who are mentally slaved. They don't think exactly freely or like a, a free people. They don't have free thinking. They are dependent on others to tell them. Especially that's why these religious leaders use them to shine. That's why they use them to shine. So, let me leave it here. Um, we are, let me talk about, there is this, um, of course, this first picture on top. We are a Yoruba man. A Yoruba man advertised a building. And in that building he advertised, he said that he does not want Igbo people. To rent it have you now seen how divided nigeria have become nigeria have become you know nigeria is more divided than we can imagine is it not are you not worried as uh, uh, you know as nigerians in nigeria are you guys not worried? What are the contingents that you guys are putting in place? Having seen things deteriorating, relationships, alliances betrayed, having seen it, what are the things you are putting in place in order to try? To save yourself in case if such thing, if this thing boil down to something else, what are you planning? The answer is I don't know. Because if a Yoruba man in Lagos will want to rent an apartment and now they advertise it exclude Igbos that they cannot rent their apartment because Yoruba people want um, 
rigged election then guilty conscience of rigging election is now making them to ostracize the Igbos who are going to complain about the rigging of this election. Have you now seen the game that they are playing? Now after playing this game, destroy what they will destroy of you. You will not be compensated. Tomorrow somebody will wake up and tell you it is time to lead a peace um, reconciliation movement. Just like Obasanjo have told you that you have to uh, lead a reconciliation movement. We are going to address this mad person talking about government in exile and prime minister of government in exile. We are going to address it and I am going to bring to you under law what a government in exile is. It is not about the definition of government in exile. It's big about under law because when you talk about government in exile there is law that abide you know there are laws that governs government in exile so just like you have seen obasanjo today let me go to obasanjo's um, post obasanjo's post where he is, he is talking about reconciliation. Let me open it. Let us read what Obasanjo said. And uh, what uh, Tinubu and all these people said. Those who are joining us now, you are welcome. We are actually, we have started a while ago. So... You can you have option to rewind and see what we have done so um, share the video invite others to join if you are joining us share the video invite others to join let me open what obasanjo said Listen to it. Obasanjo to president elect. He said, embark on, recon on national reconciliation. Obasanjo call on the president elect. <laughs> president elect, though, instead of president select. Because, um, of course, they need to be politically correct. Because if I, if we will think about it obasanjo was a man who whom you know has been promoting p2b and agreeing with me that there is some manipulation not necessarily agreeing with me agreeing with other people that saw the election rigging, election manipulations, um, vote ballot bus nation, and the chaos in the polling unit. So, they will agree with me and others that Obasanjo knew and was kicking back, or maybe pretended to be kicking back. I don't know. Putting it that way. Which one Maybe he is pretending to kick back about this election manipulation. I don't know about what he was thinking. But now he is calling now president elect to you know lead campaign for unity, reconciliation. Now let me continue to read. Following the division brought on by the recently ended elections, general election, Olusegun Obasanjo, a former president of Federal Republic of Nigeria, has stated that the next administration must seek to allow national moral, uh, national moral rearmament and reconciliation 
Obas Angel lamented that the country was today more polarized and, uh, and fractured than what its founding fathers had in mind while speaking as guest of honor at a, at a public lecture series titled From Election to Government and Performance in Abuja yesterday. So, we continue to read. He continued by saying that Nigeria governance now requires uncon unconventional thinking to save the country from its collapsing economy and enormous national debt burden. Okay. He also said that there, that there, that there, need, there needed to be political... He also said that there needed to be political action and comment or a commitment as well as administration effort to reform the public service and transform it into a unit that was capable of carrying out its duty. The former president remarked as Patrick Okibo, Patrick Okibo, founder partner of Nexia SPD as a third that elect that electoral pledges could only be carried out if the public servant responsible for driving them underwent change. According to Abbasanjo, given what we saw during the election, Nigeria is now even more divided and more corroded than we thought. This places a deep onus on any administration following the current one to urgently facilitate the process of national moral rearmament and national reconciliation for the aggrieved and will lead us across Nigeria and to uh, assuage the youth. To assuage the youth. Now, you have spoken well. You have spoken well, if I may start it in that regard. Uh, Basanjo, you have spoken well. And uh, of course, the reason why I say you have spoken well is because I have I picked up some element of you confirming that people are hurt because of the current situation of the, you know, of the um, democratic activities. People were hurt. And the reason why you are calling also for rearmament and reconciliation, it is because people do not agree with the current president select because people feel cheated people feel like you know their opinion does not matter so if people feel their opinion does not matter that could only mean that people are aware of whom they voted for and uh, you people who call yourself nigerian elite decided to select whom you want to be there now upon that now upon that you decided now calling for reconciliation because you know that there is something going on and when you agree with me that people are hurt people are you know there is problem everywhere that means you are still in your position in the position that says that the election was not free and fair that's why people feel hurt that's why people feel alienated that's why you call for reconciliation and rearmament so that means reconciliation and rearmament must start from Correcting that 
fraudulent that fraudulent election that took place that is where the peace and reconciliation that of those who still believe in one nigeria it is basically making sure they correct that mistake from the grassroots if indeed there is anybody who has a political will to lead the peace and reconciliation <laughs> in that zoological republic called nigeria between you know with between those who are fanatic about one nigeria of course if you think about us we know what we want we knew nigeria has been divided we are not seeing it only from this election but we made sure that we use this election to remind them what is going on in nigeria and you have agreed with me a former president of nigeria that there is something wrong with the you know election the that was conducted which means that nigeria is not truthful in their democratic uh, process nigeria is not truthful in their democratic uh, process when the demography is crying so it is very very important that we make sure we don't forget that path we don't forget that path why are you calling for peace and reconciliation because there was something that triggered it what triggered it the fraudulent election and the fraudulent election come from a fraudulent country a country that a place that is not meant to be a country a place that is not supposed to be seen as a country that is the reason why there is a fraudulent election an election malpractice now the president that is selected to lead you already have a problem a case international case that is all over the place making round on social media a drug case which means wherever you go with your green white green they will even search you search the hair on your hair one after another because you are led by a baron a drug baron <laughs> have you now seen exactly destroying your name for the sake of carrying green passport making yourself to be a target for the sake of carrying green passport you can never change it when the world in the index of the world where they talk about corrupt country every holder of a green passport is actually you know getting their fair share if the facebook kick you out bring yourself back up they continue to play such game if they kick you out bring yourself back up we will be there we are not going back so these are the things that we will look at and we will understand that you are not going anywhere with lying to yourself the best thing you can do is wake up from your slumber demand for what is rightfully yours demand for freedom freedom is the only thing and for you to break free you must make sure there will be a dissolution and the you know total disintegration of such thing called nigeria created by unknown person because the more you champion this nigeria the more you are promoting initiative that is not even african and that's why you will never thrive you must introduce initiative that you will follow you cannot continue to be dependent no you are no longer a kid why are you dependent on the creation of europeans why can't you find a way to be free 
Yet it is in Nigeria that when a child is 21 years old, people will be looking at him to be providing for himself. That's why everyone is under pressure. True or false? So why are we, you know, not being independent? And for you to be independent, total disintegration of the Lord Lugat initiative. So there is nothing like a fine peace, reconciliation. It does not exist. Nigeria is finished. Nigeria is divided and it is divided. There is nothing that is going to fix Nigeria because it is already divided. And me and you will all know that. If you are waiting, waiting for a, a rocket scientist or Americana um, president to come and tell you that Nigeria is divided, before you know that Nigeria is divided. It means that something is definitely wrong with you. Obasanjo agree with you that Nigeria is divided. Obasanjo agree with you there is something that causes people to be hurt. That is the, you know, the, the, the fraud that Nigeria commits against her own people. Nigeria will never be fixed. Nigeria can never go forward. And now coming to the reason why Obasanjo was rallying with Pitobi. It can only be two reasons. Number one, Obasanjo have done a lot of mistakes in the past. He did a lot of mistakes in the past against Biafran. And the mistakes he did in the past, he's the one who arrested those who actually sabotaged Biafra, um, Biafra war. He took, he played a role there. So what he's doing is either he is trying to seek for restitution or he is trying to still play the game he played before two things are involved seek for restitution play the game you played before if he's playing the game he played before for the sake of his own people i don't blame him because nigeria is divided nigeria is divided it is all about those who know how to play the game to play it and our people does not know how to play the game they are foolish those you put in your representative they are foolish the only thing they do is looking for where there is a paper they will steal it and go and hide it in their offshore that's actually actually what they are looking for from your senators to your governors, from your you know to your chairman to your counselor, all of them they are very very corrupt, super corrupt. To your police, those ones are rotten. Your law enforcers, rotten. You've seen how they are going about intimidating people, slapping a blooded man that did them nothing just because he asked them question they give you a dirty slap Pow! violation of human right you don't have right to slap such a person just like that if you approach a person as a police officer the person has the right to say show me your id card and you must show them your id card the person has the right to ask him why did you stop me? You have the right to tell the person. You are compelled to tell the person why you stop them. Not you will start slapping them when they ask you what's wrong. What, are, what is going on here? You slap them. No. That's not law enforcement. That is military tyranny. That's what it is. Military tyranny. That's exactly what is going on in Nigeria. And you believe that one day, somehow, 
magic will happen. Nigeria, boom, Nigeria become good. Everything is all right. And somebody will come and do it. How Nigeria is divided today. It is a cause for alarm. It is a cause for alarm. The division in Nigeria. Let me show you an example. Let me show you. I've shown you one. With a Yoruba man advertising a house and say he doesn't want a Biafran there. Even though they write a do, that is how they want to also drag a do people into the problem that they have started because they know that the do people, you know, somebody from a do found Lagos. <coughs> so that's how they want to drag a do to their nonsense. They know, uh, uh, of course, that somebody from, uh, you know, a do found Lagos. So that's why they said um, we are, we are, they, they make a do can look for it, but other Biaf Biafrans cannot. A do can, Biafrans cannot. <laughs> Game of mind. This is a game of chase. Let me show you another one. Because he didn't only, he never only, um, he didn't um, end up in the, in the West. It is also happening in the North. Let's see. Before we come to the th constructive threat. At Chima Amanda. The threat on Chima Amanda. Now, let's go there. One moment. So that you will know what is happening around you. Because these type of things, they don't trend. Have you seen the picture? It doesn't trend when it happens. Now listen to it. This was on the, let's see if we, on the 9th of April, 9th of April. This is a chaos that took place. I was shot at twice, but I survived. I begged them not to kill me, but they shot at me. A victim narrated. Now listen to it. Listen to the story. There was a tension in Guadabawa, Guadabawa community of Sokoto State. Are you listening? Following a conflict between the Fulani and Hausa people residing in the area, <laughs> it led to the death of many locals from the both sides, including a security operatives. A local official, Aminu Guadabawa, told the VOA Hausa, Voice of Hausa, in an interview monitored by our correspondent on Saturday, that people in the area were living in fear as the conflict even claimed the life of a soldier. They are afraid of reprisal, reprisal attack from the Fulani bandits. Remember that this is Fulani living in a community versus Hausa living in a community, not their terrorists or bandits. Have you seen now how divided is the country? Then you go back to the topic of this program and read it thoroughly. You will understand more. Now it says, let's continue reading. According to a survivor, the Fulani attacked my relation with knives but he has spiritual powers that would not allow sharp object to pierce his skin so they intensified the attack on him and succeeded in 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 hacking his head in hacking his head off his body similarly similarly a full animal who survived the violent, the violent uh, communal clash narrated his ordeal. According to him, I was shot at twice. I survived. I begged them not to kill me, but they shot at me. The voice of Hausa reported that when the police in Sokoto were contacted, they said 
they were still waiting for details of the attack. Scores were reported killed during the conflict, while many sustained injuries. Attacks allegedly by Fulani bandits were not new in the area as a recent bandit report, you know, reportedly raided communities in Rabah and other locations in the northwest state Onuminya innocent. Now, they talk about Fulani bandit here. But now, let's go back to read it from the beginning because, of course, I've, I always tell you that you see Nigeria uh, Nigeria media they always do what is called self-contradiction. Self-contradiction. Now read with me from the beginning. Let us go back to the beginning. He says, let us go back to the beginning so that we will understand what's going on here. Let's see what is going on. Because now they change the story. From the beginning, he said, there was a tension in Guadabawa community of Sokoto State. Following the conflict between the Fulani and the Hausa residing in the area. So Fulani and the Hausa residing in the area. It means that there, is, there are no bandits because people, he cannot mention Fulanis and the Hausas residing in the area. So it means that it is a community that is divided due to their ethnicity differences they divided and start fighting themselves this is not a bandit attack bandit attack or terrorist attack whichever one they call it this is a conflict ethnicity division that came up and took the life of innocent people and it will always continue like that and they will always twist the news because you they will write the news in a such a way that it doesn't make sense you will not understand it but at the end of the day you will see these are communities rising up against each other and now some the other community is now so scared that the bandits might join might come later in order to attack them for attacking their own people because a full animal is very very you know they are protective over their own they are not like Igbo people you know in in in, in nigeria Igbo people we don't we don't support evil we don't support evil that's the reason why you don't see us asking or you know demanding for justice for Ike Akwaramado today we are not calling for you know for support we are not giving Ike Akwaramado support today because we don't support evil because there is a saying in our land that says if only metal so because we don't support evil so many people might see it and say we are fighting each other we don't like each other but we don't support evil a real evil man does not support evil you cannot try to kill another evil man and you expect other evils to support you no we don't support evil that is one thing you should understand those that do does not mean that there are no people who are evil in Igbo land. They are evil, but when they are evil, catch up with them. If only metolo will is yabulu. That's how it is. But these people, Fulani, they support evil, they support their own. That's why you will see Gumi going negotiating with the terrorist. After that, no Gumi will not get arrested. Gumi will tell you, if you don't do this, terrorists will overwhelm Nigeria. Gumi will not get arrested. But only a traditional ruler said, I will call IPOB to protect us. Because they know that from home, IPOB is protecting them. That they can go into the bush, come back without being killed. Are you now understanding it? 
But he didn't know the value of IPOB before until that time because of his grievances on the attack on his own people. He made unguarded statement. Knowing that anything that is any statement that is made by Igbo or Biafrans, it becomes a problem in Nigeria. It, any other race can make it. Even a terrorist brother can make it. No problem. But let it be made by Igbo person. That's when uh, you will see that DSS, they don't have a job. Their only job is to look for Biafrans, Igbo people to arrest. That's the job of DSS in Nigeria. The country is divided. They believe that marginalizing Biafrans, they believe that marginalizing Biafrans is going to keep other race together. They don't know that this thing that is going to happen, it is not going to be like 1967. It is going to be father against father, mother against mother, son against mother, mother against son. So that is how it is going to be. Fulani against Tausa, Yoruba against Ibu, Ibu against Yoruba. This are, that is how then you will come to realization that this evil contraption, evil amalgamation is timed up. This evil amalgamation, they need to they need to review. There must be a review. The you know the debate is supposed to start. How are we going to do it? Should we go our separate ways? Should we conduct referendum? Conduct referendum to know whether we are going to go our separate ways. If Nigeria is a country that actually care for human life or care for unity, then we'll start talking about reviewing this amalgamation. What has it done for us in the last six decades? In the last ten decades, what has it done for Nigeria? Absolutely nothing. Other than spilling innocent blood. That's what it has done. Marginalization. Alienation. Ethnicity division. On, you know, senseless competition. That's what it has brought to us. That amalgamation. So Nigeria is so divided. Because so many people will believe it is only um, Igbos that are having problem in Nigeria. Because they are not reporting the ones that is happening in the north. They want the world to continue to see it is only Igbos that are the problem. It is only these people that are agitating that are the problem without informing the world that these people agitating are the people who know the value of human life. So they are trying to save human life. Because in the north, they don't have people who speak for them. They only have Northern Coalition Group or Northern Consensus. They will come and they will talk rubbish and they will tell you on behalf of the north when they are not representing anybody. They are representing their selfish interest. That is what the Northern Coalition they represent. They will tell you they are speaking for the North. They will go and command the North. And they will be following them like sheep. With, you know, sheep and their shepherd. Without asking questions. Because they have impoverished them. They don't bring their news on the, on, the, on the mainstream. The killings. It is only when it happened too much. The sun and people are noticing. They will just write one. 50 was killed in fresh attack. And 10 was killed in fresh attack. That's how it is. How long are we going to stand 
aside. Watching people die. Innocent people. Kamara Harris went to Africa. Recently. What did she go to Africa to do? She went to donate money to some certain countries. To support human rights. Human rights on what? On LGBTQ. That's what human rights. That's what <laughs> she went to support. On LGBTQ. Mostly. That's what they are talking about. When they talk about human rights. Why are they prioritizing LGBTQ minority? Why are they prioritizing it? They don't prioritize human life. But they prioritize nonsense. Okay, let me not call it nonsense. Let me just, you know, not call it nonsense. Let's pretend that it is something um, reasonable. People are dying. For the sake of the type of setup, these people brought and impose on us they don't care about it what they are prioritizing is people who are doing things that is abnormal that animal doesn't even do and they are coming and prioritizing their safety Instead of prioritizing the safety of majority in certain African countries because their excesses, their influence is bringing negative impact on these countries because it is the making of their ancestor that such Nigeria creation, bringing different people, different, you know, people who were intelligent, force them to be together, destroy their minds, work on their minds, destroy it, make sure and forcing to, to continue live, making them to be together while they are busy killing themselves. Now it boils down to the, the, you know, making sure that your number, there is more, you know, fertility in your side than fertility. That's what it's going on. More fertility in your side than fertility what am i trying to say people die more while they promote what causes you know what doesn't bring life like lgbtq they don't make children if they maybe in a nation they are hundred you'll find out only two or three made children Maybe two or three met children or married to, or be with um, adopt child. It is not a growing society because a growing society you multiply with children. While government is doing more work to expand, to make sure they cater for all of them. That is a good, a growing society. So they are ignoring the, you know, the, fat, you know, the fatality while promoting the infertility are you now seeing the the the, the, the duo ignoring the, the the fatality that is taking place across the continent while promoting the infertility to make sure that your number is being reduced when they are calling for their number to multiply have you seen now the cheating and the politics they are playing with you 
a person who do man, a man that do man does not have child. He can never make children. That's it. A woman who do woman can never make children. Whatever they do, it is their business. But at the end of the day, why are they promoting it more than promoting what is the safety of people? The majority, not the minority. Because for goodness sake, these people are the minority. Why are they prioritized than the majority? Continue to ask yourself that question. People are dying every day in Nigeria, in Africa, all over the place, in Congo, in... in uh, People are dying every day. But what people go to donate $16 million, $100 million, $150 million, they tell you it's human right. Human right on what? Force you to promote LGBTQ. Why? Even those LGBTQ society, if you think out of the box, if you can think out of the box, just forget your sexual orientation think out of the box why are they promoting you minority but not promoting the majority problem that is fatal that is more fatal remember that in your own situation just like in uganda you can be hiding doing it if you are caught you bear the consequences but in the situation of people dying for no reason, they don't hide to kill them. They call themselves terrorists. They call themselves people who have monopoly of violence. Government is killing. Um, police, army, in secret, they are killing. Nobody is held accountable. Is that no violation of human rights? Why is there no investment? Why is there no donation that tackles that? UN is in Nigeria today. UN military equipment is in Nigeria today. I have not set, I have not seen them in the north where there is Boko Haram. Why? I don't know why. But they are in Edo. Center between Lagos. You know, between west and the east. The border between west and the east. They are there. Why? Why can't they go to the border between west and the north? Or go to the border between north and the east? Why? Why are they in Edo? Because the projection that these people have put in place is to causing chaos between Yoruba and Igbo. A serious one, oh, a serious one between Yoruba and Igbo. That's why when you are talking about election malpractice, you will find um, Katriona Lang telling you the election was correct because they have a plan, and that plan is what is the reason why you see the presence of UN in Nigeria because they believe they follow their algorithm. They believe it is time for that, you know, that thing to happen. The more, you know, when they are done from that area and they go without suggesting the disintegration of this Nigeria contraption, then you will know what I am talking about. You will understand what I am talking about. Because they are not there to do anything beneficial to you. I don't think they are there to do benef anything beneficial. Because if they are there to do t something beneficial, with all these machineries they came with, they go and save the people of the north first that are dying of terrorism every day. Like every day. Then when they are done there, they will now come to this fresh one. That just started yesterday. Bring a holistic approach. Because what they are bringing right now is a blanket. <laughs> a blanket. 
brazen best known to them. The only solution to Nigeria problem must be a holistic approach. It must come as a holistic approach. It must not come as a blanket. No. Nigeria is too big for somebody to be coming and bringing a blanket approach. No. That is the reason why you will understand that your problem to solve it is in your hands. If you like, go and continue to say your mother is the one who is the problem of your sister. Or your father is the one who is killing you people. Instead of focusing and tackling the problem that is destroying you, that is making you not to have good hospital, good school, good road. Every day somebody wear megi, wear money, it is only thing that happened in a place where there is abject poverty. That's where they, the way they think. And that's what they do to themselves. If there is a if there is good road infrastructural development in security, you will you be talking about this rubbish? No, you won't have time. Everyone wake up and go to their work. Who have time if you like it's like going to UK now? You are talking about um, um, my, um, the, my mother is doing juju for me. While in UK. All of you are in UK. You are saying your mother is doing UK juju for you inside UK. Who know what what is juju? These things they they are not recognized. Why is it recognized in your land? Because of poverty. If there is no poverty, no one will even think about going to native doctor to say now do juju for this. That is the reason why there is adage that say that eh won run e buten to ku won. Adriki ibe na agwakwa. If you don't have and others are having, it makes you feel bad. And when you feel bad, you might do something that is you know irrational. That is the problem. So in Nigeria it is time for all the youth, whether you are Hausa, whether you are Yoruba, whether you are um, Biafra, wherever you are, it is time for you to, to, you know, take your destiny in your hands. Your destiny is in your hands. Because the people you have borrowed your destiny over the years they are not you know they are toiling with it they are killing you killing it making you die without returning it so it is time for you to determine where you want your destiny to be it's very very important otherwise you are not going to there will be no change it will always get worse do you know why it will always get worse Dollar was Nigeria, you know, the, the more the year is coming, the more dollar is climbing up in Nigeria. Every five years, dollar is going up in Nigeria. Have you asked yourself why? Because it is not created to get better. It is created to deteriorate until the doomsday. Don't wait for the doomsday. Make a hair while the sun is shining. It will save lives. If you wait for the doomsday, it will bring catastrophe. Now, don't wait for your politicians. They will never represent you. They, their private jet is steaming. Their private jet is idling, rather, sorry. Their private jet is idling. Osu anyatolo. That is the slang, the, the slogan they use for themselves. Osu anyatolo. Now, who is going to come and rescue you? That is the question you need to be asking yourself. So, it is only through revolution. As it is now, revolution is what will make these people to get your attention. To, you know, they will make you to get the attention of these people. 
and the world at large that are ignoring your cry. Revolution. Now, let's take for example. Let me show you something. Because without revolution, they will be catching you one after another. These politicians will be playing games with you. As na what an air, what an air, na what an air, one's an air law causing on a ramano. Let me show you an example. Now, the example is there is a, let me see this before we proceed. Easter, Tinubu Atiku, Bajabi Amela, Pito B, other kicks against agent of this unit. <laughs> Are you paying attention? They kick against agents of this unity. <laughs> Pito B included though. The presidential elect, Senator Bola Mary Tunubu, the presidential candidate of People Democratic Party, PDP, Atiku Abubaka, Speaker of the House of Representatives, Honorable Femi Bajabi Amela, presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Mr. Pito B, the Catholic Archbishop of Abuja, most, most rev, rev, um, Reverend Ignatius uh, Kaigama, and the governor of Delta State, Cross River, Bayaso Ogun State, Enugu Nasarawa, and Imo State have called on Nigeria to shun the agent of disunity in the country. In his Easter message, Tunubu stated that peaceful, strong, unity, and prosperous country is achievable if Nigeria is true, divisive, uh, parochial, ethnic, and religious sentiments and rivalries. Tunubu rejoiced with Christians in the Nigeria and all over the world who are celebrating Easter. He urged everyone to reflect on the priceless and sacrifice and limitless of love for mankind. Where was the love when they were rigging election? Where was the love when they rip you off your right under democratic dispensation? Where is the love? Where is the unity? For you to promote unity, you need to give honor to those whom honor is due. <laughs> right? So have you seen their, how fake their love is? How fake? Their love is very fake. Very, very fake. They will beat you and tell you not to cry. Have you now seen how all these politicians will come together and tell you, uh, let's promote unity. Uh, I'm telling you, one day people will come and tell you for the sake of be, being scared. And uh, you, I don't, you, it is not wise for you to rally about a person who chickens out. Do you know the reason why we follow Mazen Namdekan? Conrad comes on. He is a man. He is the man. You don't follow a man that chickens out. If he is joining these people calling for calling for unity and telling you that uh, the agent of this unity what is that agent of this unity Femi Faneka Yode is there you know talking anything that he feel like insulting anybody he feel like threatening anybody he feel like threatening ethnic group DSS did not go and arrest Femi Faneka Yode but you go, um, a traditional ruler just spoke something. And they went and picked him up. Jail him. Straight. Did they take him to court? The answer is no. So where are you going to start with the peace? Mazin Namdekan was kidnapped and renditioned to Nigeria. Caught the judge and acquitted him. He is still held in the custody. Where are you going to start with this, your peace? Chima Amanda's, you know, wrote a piece kicking back against the, the election malpractices in Nigeria. Constructively, they have threatened her. Listen to this. Let me show you. Because, um,
Let me show you. Okay, now before okay, let me show you that. Let me show you that. Let me after showing you, I will contextualize it to the next thing I'm going to show you. One day you will see Peter be telling you it is all right. Let's uh, forget. Let's move forward. Um, after you giving you all hope, <laughs> that's when you will know that he's also a double agent. <laughs> I'm telling you, Niger I'm telling you, those one Nigerianist. If Peter Obi begin tomorrow to preach otherwise, uh, uh, let's accept it. It means that he's a double agent. He's wasting your time. I'm telling you, any day he starts speaking from both sides of his mouth. <laughs> He's a double agent. Now, listen to this. Listen to this. Because he cannot cause problem for all of you that support him and he will come and become a good man. Let's make peace. And the problem that he cause you, he will never you know, amend it. He will come and tell you, let's make peace. A coward. You Listen to this. In an apparent move to ensure, okay, let me see the heading. Tunubu's aid, Dele Aleke, differs with Chima Amanda on outcome of 2023 election. Listen attentively. I want you to listen to the constructive threat they have given to her. And I know why they are constructive about it. Chima Amanda. In an open letter to Biden, criticized the U.S. government for congratulating Tinubu on his victory at the poll. Now, in an apparent move to ensure the President of the United States, Mr. Joe Biden, sent a congratulatory, uh, a congratulatory message to President-elect Senator Bola Tinubu. His special advisor on communication, Mr. Ad Mr. Deleke, Dele Aleke, has faulted the claim by the international by an internationally acclaimed novelist, Chima Amanda Adichie, that the All Progressive Congress could not have won the election if the result had been uploaded in real time to the INEC result viewing IR. EV. IREV Poro. Chima Amanda, in an open letter to Biden, criticized the U.S. for congratulating uh, Tinubu on his victory at the poll. Though the U.S. Has, um, has congratulated Tinubu, its president has not formally sent a congratulatory message from the White House. In Chima Amanda's open letter titled Nigeria's Hollow Democracy, published in Atlantic, a Nigeria uh, in a United States based newspaper. She noted that something remarkable happened on the morning of February 25, the day of the Nigeria election uh, um, presidential election. Many Nigerians went out to vote holding in their heart a new sense of trust, cautious trust, but still trust. Now, in the letter, she argued that the following was a breach of the trust when and on February 26, social media became flooded with evidence of voting irregularities. Numbers crossed, crossed out and rewritten. Some originally written in black, in black ink, had been rewritten in blue. Some blunderingly white, uh, um, white out with tipex that's what they wrote the election had not only been rigged but done in such shoddy shabby manner that it insulted the intelligence of nigerians nigerians according to her the ruling party candidate tunubu was eventually announced as the presidential i don't know why they're repeating all these stories instead of going straight to the point 
Rage is brewing. Rage is um, brewing. Aditya said, especially among young people, the discount, discontent, the discontent, the despair, the tension in the air have not been this uh, palpable in, in years. The novelist faulted the United States Department to respond in congratulating Tinubu and accepting the result. American intelligence surely cannot be so inept. A little homework, they will know what manifestly obvious to me. And so many others. The process was... Okay, let me shift a bit. Let me... She, she told that you have spoken the importance of global community democracy. Okay, that is part of the message. And she argued... Okay. Okay, let me go to um the man in a rejoinder. What the, this Aleke... Um, Tinubu's aid, Aleke said. Let me go straight to that. Aleke, in a rejoinder, said the novelist would be lucky to avoid being asked to prove her allegation in court. Have you seen the constructive threat there? Uh, maybe you don't not or you don't understand it, but that is a constructive threat. Aleke, in a rejoinder, said the novelist would be lucky to avoid being asked to prove her allegation in court. Chima Amanda will be lucky if she does not have to prove this weighty allegation in court, he said, while trying to prove the credibility of the election. Aleke stated, that the decision of the Labour Party's presidential candidate, Mr. B, and his counterpart in the new Nigeria People Party, NNPP, Mr. Rabiu Kwankwaso, to defect from the PDP to LP and NNPP, respectively, helped Tinubu to win election. It is instructive that Pito B and Rabiu Kwankwaso broke away from the PDP to context the election on the platform of LP and NNP, respectively. Had the PDP contested the election as, as one with Obi and Kwankwaso in its fold, winning the election would, would have been uphill, uphill, almost impossible tax for the APC. But contesting on three separate platforms against the ruling party, as they did, the victory of APC was logically and em empirically inevitable, he wrote. Now, let us come in before I continue to read. There where they talk about the ruling party. The, it is not mandatory for a ruling party to win election. It is not mandatory. It is not a, there is because the track record determines whether ruling party is a good candidate to win an election. Track record. The track record of Buhari. <laughs> APC. I believe Buhari is the first president of APC. Right? The first president of all peoples, um, is it the APC? Is, a, is it all, uh, all people's criminal? Or is it all people's criminal? Or all people's. Or is it the uh, APC? All people's cre um, um, Congress? Or, yeah. All people's Congress. Do he is the first um, president in all people's Congress? And there is nothing that, you know, will give them the vote 
coming out from this present administration? Is it the taking away of Naira? The present administration starve people, make people to cry in the bank from assessing their money. Pre-election, this president brought terrorism more than ever before. This present administration, under all people's criminal, brought calamity. All people's country, sorry. Bro brought calamity in the land. Brought more division than ever in the land. So what will trigger a person, a, a, somebody who is sensible to vote for such party except the people they will buy to vote for them and when they are buying they cannot buy the whole of nigeria they cannot buy 40 percent of nigeria they can because your work is your vote they have no work and the work the best work is in infrastructure and security that is the best work any leader can do security and infrastructure economy security and infrastructure very very important without that there is no nation so this party did not achieve any of this and he's calling them ruling party you don't have you don't have what it takes to context with the ruling party which has led people to hell that they are trying to come out of. The whole nation to hell. They are trying to come out of it. And you, you say they took themselves back to it. I don't think it is possible. It is not possible. Not even that I don't think. And that is what this man is saying. That Chima Amanda would be lucky. If the DSS did not, because if he, I, I am not quoting him verbatim, but according to what he said, Chima Amanda will be lucky if he, she is not brought in and taken to court to prove that the Nigeria election was hollow and sham. That's exactly the meaning of what this guy said. Because Sima Amanda is from Biafra clan. Whatever they say, there must be meaning out of it. It is something that people, they don't have freedom of speech. They don't have freedom op of, to their opinion. They don't have freedom. That's why what she said is a problem. So she, she is now trying to intimidate her. Avoid being asked to prove allegation in court. It's a constructive threat. In case if you never know. So, now, have you now seen the reason why you are fooling yourself? If you are an Igbo person, continue to clamor for one Nigeria. You are a biggest fool of the century. Believe you me. If you are from Biafra land, you are clamoring one Nigeria, something is wrong with you. Now, this man did not challenge those who have information, raw information about the election that happened. But she's challenging Chima Amanda because she want to intimidate her. It shook them that she could do, you know, make that move. But there is an adage that says, "Onya pata kona wa go na nola makoi ote toso oso oso apo ya bana noko." They never expected that she could make that move. Not from her. So it shook them. That is the reason why I continue to call on my sister Chima Amanda. Stop 
It is no longer time to defend this Nigeria. It is time to defend your own people directly. Your own people. It is about ethnicity right now. The Fulanis are protecting their, their terrorists. You cannot touch them. That's why Gumi go and negotiate with terrorists. Come back and tell you, warn you what you must do for the, ter the terrorists. Otherwise, there will be problem. And he's not getting arrested. That is the reason why Femi Faneka Yode can open his mouth, insult anybody he wants. Threaten the Igbo as a, a nation or ethnicity under one zoo. He will not get reprimanded. But another person say the same thing, not even harsh. The way Olomo AFC or MC said his own, he got taken immediately to custody. So, have you now seen how important it is important now? Stop writing to for the sake of this one Nigeria. It's not going to do anybody any good. It is not. Wolosho Winka is protecting his own bro brother. His own brother. So everyone has turned to their own. Except Biafrans. When are you going to turn to your own? Let's use this our influence. To get the cry of Biafrans. To the world. Because whether you if you decide to continue to believe in nigeria nothing it, it will do nothing for you it will do absolutely nothing for you did you now see let me now show you how they have you know they have tried to nullify your claim how they have tried to nullify your claim before we go there, let me finish read this article. Before we go there, how they try to nullify your claim by bringing a new one. He noted that Chima Amanda also based her opinion on the outcome of election on flawed opinion polls conducted before the 25 February election. Hmm. Chima Amanda had pinned her hopes on a possible OB victory, partly on prediction of flawed opinion polls some of which we are predicted on statistically negli negligible and thus unreliable sample size and others on no on no discernible empirical basis whatsoever Opinion polls do not win election, Aleke said. Aleke questioned Chima Amanda's knowledge of Nigeria's electoral laws and role of technology in the last election. Chima Amanda betrays her ignorance of Nigeria politics and unwittingly misled her readers. He added, Without the slightest shred of evidence, Sima Amanda avers that INEC inability to upload results of the presidential election online as promised on February 25 was not due to technical hitches, but rather deliberate, uh, deliberate human mischief and manipulation to rig election. In her words, if results were updated right after voting was conducted, then the ruling party or progressive criminal, sorry, Congress, which has been in power since 2015, would have no opportunity for manipulation. Technology would redeem democracy result. The, the redeemed democracy result will no longer feature more than voters. Nigeria will no longer have 
their leaders choosing for them. Aleke described Chima Amanda's claim as a mischievous distortion of reality and utterly laughable. According to him, the introduction of the bimodal, bimodal voters accreditation system, BVAS, in the 2023 election for the first time indeed helped to ensure that only duly accredited voters could vote. Aleke argued that it was now no longer possible for party agents in collision with unscrupulous electoral officials and security agents to simply print ballot papers and stuff uh, and stuff uh, ballot boxes in favor of a, a certain in favor of certain parties and candidates he insisted democracy in nigeria was thriving contrary to the acclaimed author's claim describing her as an unrepentant Igbo jingoistic jingoistic arguing that Obi had campaign, campaigned based on religion and ethnicity. He insisted the former Anambra state governor would never emerge Nigeria's president having based his campaign on those factors. Now, have you now seen how they have, they are trying to also twist it that Obi campaigned Based on religious that will be campaigned. Let me see it again. Will be campaigned based on religion and ethnicity. <laughs> so now, having seen Obi's campaign, if will be campaigned based on religion. And ethnicity will be go to the 36 state of Nigeria, one after another. I believe he, he made it, to, or maybe he didn't make it to 36 state because of terrorist terrorism. I don't know, but I know that Obi visited northern Nigeria, west more than he visited his own place. So how then will you argue that his campaign is based on ethnicity? and uh, um, religion obi even went to the is it emir and acted like muslim he went there so how is his campaign based on religion and ethnicity the question that you all of you who know the truth and who have you know, if you still have your conscience with you, you know, to answer it. Not like I am promoting OB or anything. But in reality check, let us be realistic. Because we are using this thing that happened to OB for you to, you know, as a point of contact to remind you what has been happening. That we've been preaching over the years and you've been ignorant of understanding the fact that you and your children and family are not needed. One Nigeria is a shamble, is a sham. It's a, it, it is a scam. Now, let's stretch it to the INEC um, claim. The latest INEC claim. Let us stretch it to the latest INEC claim. <laughs> You know, because um, I know uh, I, I brought all of it. After this, I am not going to go further to this Nigeria sham. I am going to go to this um, self-acclaimed prime minister of government in exile to break it down. There are many things we had to talk about. The reason why we always stay long when we come is that we do it while we can. We don't know when we are going to have time to do it again. That's the problem. So let me show you something now. The claim of the INEC, latest one. All right, here we go.
Okay, this one is a video where they said the INEC uh, um, the INEC uh, chairman. I just want to to see. I want you to see the. I hope you saw the 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 the, the right up. Okay, let me increase the the resolution. I don't know if you can see it. Of course you can. Can you see the headline? I'm not going to play the video, but I just want to show you exactly what it looks like. You can see what they said there. I hope you can see it. It says 2023 presidential election fallout. INEC Electronics Coalition of Resort not compulsory. Not compulsory. Let me tell you who said it. Electronic transmission of resort not compulsory. Ex INEC spokesperson by Channel TV. Now, let us find out why electronics transmission or collection of result not compulsory why then the first question is why is there introduction of this electronics collection when they are not compulsory does it mean that you take taxpayers money you play with it or does it mean that you guys brought it in order to you know use it and play games you didn't buy it to use it for the sake of a credible election if you say not compulsory does it mean that you are using something that is trying an error you are trying an error with what determines the life of 260 million people and more? You were trying an error. If you say it is not compulsory, why then introduce it? Why then introduce it? If it is not compulsory. That election, you know, pre-election, on the election eve, it was announced that election is going to be conducted or collection is going to be conducted through the bv bv whatever the election uh, electronics um, transmission through electronics transmission now on the day of election it was not the case then you will now see post election you find somebody telling you it is not compulsory. Then why did you introduce it pre-election? So, there is a shady stuff there. Why did you introduce it at all? Because this is something that determines the life. This is the heart of democracy in Nigeria. You introduce something that is not compulsory. And down, that thing that is not compulsory. People did, 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 you know, people actually trusted you because of something, that thing that you claim is not compulsory. People trusted and believed that, you know, with this, we can get a better deal. Not knowing that that thing is not compulsory. They just introduce it to act like they are going to give you a credible election but little did you know that you know it was just there for being their sake they're playing games with you because if that thing worked there will be no extra numbers and extra scratching and marking there will be no search but it wasn't there that's how they want to nullify the claim of the people who were in the polling unit 
the evidence that people presented directly from the polling unit live and direct the social media does not lie so if eventually this man is saying that if you have to present evidence there is a lot of them there is a lot of evidence people were on the ground in polling units where all these things took place so what evidence do you, are you looking for? Oh, you can actually bring one or two people in the polling unit and they, they testify what happened in polling unit. Is that not an evidence? Eyewitness. <laughs> that is what it's called. Eyewitness. Not even a video. Eyewitness. So, have you now seen you will never get anything good from Nigeria? It is up to you to actually tell yourself exactly what you are looking for. I am telling you the honest truth. Tell yourself exactly what is it that you want. If you at all, if at all you know what you want. Because if you are sensible, it is time for you to revolt against this system that bring a bloodbath. The stand to revolt against this system that, break, that is bringing a bloodbath. Revolt against it. That's the only way you can get out of it. Although, if you continue to think that you will complain, complain, it will, things will get better. Nothing is going to get better, I can assure you. Absolutely nothing is going to get better. Rather, the politicians will unite at the back and be acting like they are fighting. Small time, they will come and they will think that the reason the time you will forget because you are staying in the zoo. I'm a zoo, living in the zoo. I'm a zoo, I'm a zazu, live in the zoo. By the time you, you will forget, they will give you banana you forget. That's how this politician sees you to be. They give you banana, you just forget. Because you are as, as a zoo living in the zoo. And the people will come and tell you it's okay. Unless you need unite. Um, every power of this unit. <laughs> every, any power of this unit. We say no to it. That's the English he will come and speak to his obedient movement. Now you heard that P2B was partially detained. In, a, in the UK. You ask yourself, you know. Why was Peter be detained in the UK? There was something that you I was playing to you day before yesterday from from Boris Johnson, where he told you that um, Prince uh, of London was arrested for loitering, <laughs> for loitering. So they want to give you example of it that you are nobody. Anybody can get arrested, but now. The issue, why did they start it with Obi? They say for impersonation. For impersonation. Why did they start it with Obi? Instead of starting it with the criminals we know. Um, of course, they are trying, in my own point of view, I believe they are trying to show you that, you, you know, anybody can, you know, be detained, go on to the other side of the law. I don't even see anything. Um big about it because you are obi you are one nigerianist you are holding a green passport and your president uh, select now uh, is a he has polluted the green passport more so anywhere you go you must be scrutinized you know your scrutiny is going to be extraordinary because you are going to be led by a drug baron so automatically of course you, you will see the Position of a Tinubu, if eventually ascend that office, you will see drug moving up. You know, drugs will be they will be carrying drugs like uh, hawking drugs on the street because that is what if you are uh, select a president that is a drug dealer, or you will find out that the whole country will be drug dealings, terrorist. You will find terrorists roaming around the street. Gangster, you will find gangster 
killing people everywhere with all pleasure <laughs> so that is exactly what these people they know so you being scrutinized it is about your green passport they know they see your face so oh. it is about your green passport they say you are imperson- uh, uh, they say you impersonating somebody or what if that is true <laughs> I saw it on Arise TV. I, I have it here. I have it here. As um, let it not be like uh, it is something I am I am uh, formulating by myself. I believe I have it here. Let me show you. Okay, I think the link is not here. Let me bring it to you. I think I still have the, is it in front of me? Oh, that means I didn't copy the link. But if you check it on Arise TV, you will find it on Arise TV. Let me, let me bring it to you definitely. I don't, let me not. Say if you check it, let me bring it to you. Let me search it and bring it in front of you. <coughs> okay, now, even Femi Faneka Yode posted it. <laughs> because he even posted it. He posted it. <laughs> oh. Let me bring it in front of you of your screen. Because I saw it on Arise TV today. Of course it is in front of your screen actually. It is in front of your screen. Let me show you. He is laughing. He is laughing at Peter. He is not. He is not aware that he's the next. I won't. I won't be able to search it on. On Arise News, but uh, I will be able to bring it and show you. <laughs> Did you see it? Peter will be escorted, detained, and deported back to Nigeria. Like a common criminal. <laughs> hey, this one is even more, 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 more serious. <laughs> Peter will be as, uh, accosted, detained, deported back to Nigeria like a common criminal by British authorities. Why didn't you say yes? Why didn't you say yes, Daddy? <laughs> Why didn't you say yes, daddy, <laughs> to the immigration officer? Or oh, better still, why didn't you call the little Englander or the little diva to put in a word for you? Hi, this guy is very insultive. <laughs> wow, this guy called Femi is very, very insultive. He's a spoiled brat. That's what he is. He's a brat. I know people like him. I know people like him very well. They are spoiled brat. They don't have a, you know, <laughs> they don't have, <laughs> in fact, they know how to, you know, insult people very well. So, Peter B was actually bundled back from <laughs> Britain. Hi, Ndikelo, Nigeria. These are the people who, who um, created Nigeria. Uh, they they talk about uh, in the details of the news they talked about um uh, the possible reason why he was detained that he was impersonating somebody 
Of course, I will know that even if you kid that fools it and you, your P2B has been making waves on social media everywhere, even on the mainstream. You can't tell me that they don't they didn't know it was your your almighty obedience that they bundled him back. Even according to this one now, he said they bundled him back. So have you now seen? He was accosted, detained, and later bundled back like a common criminal. Wow. <laughs> hey! Who is going to stand there for you? Nobody. Only IPOB. Only Biafra is going to restore your dignity. Without Biafra, you see all of you, you are doomed. Without Biafra, you are doomed. You see why we must get Biafra by fire, by force. You see why we must start looking for alliances. Because new ones, new ones, fresh alliances. And the alliances must start with our own people in Africa. Our own people in Africa. We must start from there. Charity begins from home. Now, have you now seen the reason why it is very important? We must start an alliance. Because where it is going, the people who created you, they are not ready to respect you. They are not.